The nail salon business in the United States is on the rise with revenue topping eight and a half billion dollars last year. But an investigation by the New York Times shows all that luxury is coming at quite a cost. It finds that nail salon workers in the New York area are underpaid, face discrimination and serious health risk. Part one is the most viewed, emailed, tweeted and shared Times article on Facebook these days. First on CBS this CBS This Morning, that's still the name of the program. Reporter Sarah Mazanier joins us with the true story behind the popular Manny Petty phenomenon. Sarah, good morning. Good morning. So what made you think that this would be interesting to even look at nail salons? Well, it started because I was getting a pedicure, as women in New York do, uh, on my birthday at a very quirky 24-hour nail salon. It was about 10 a.m. And I said to the woman doing my toes, I said, um, who works the night shift at this salon? And she said, well, I work the night shift. And I said, but it's the day. So oh, I work the day shift too. I said, please explain. And she said, I work 24 hours a day, six mm -hmm. days a week. When people come in at night, they shake me awake from a barracks above the salon where I live. On the seventh day, I go home to my apartment in Flushing, sleep for 24 hours, and come right back. And I thought, this woman is enslaved. Wow. So how long did you, did you carry out this investigation of nail salons? So this investigation took 13 months. I spoke to upwards of 200 manicurists who worked in probably around 900 mm. to 600 shops all told. And they even have to pay to work at a salon. How does that work? The starting salary to nail salon, I like to say, is negative $200 because manicurists mm. have to pay for their jobs. Then they work for free for a period of weeks to months, at which point they earn maybe $30 a day. Okay. So how common is it, and are there specific salons that you're talking about? I believe I'm speaking about the majority of the salons in the industry. Interviewing all these workers, I found almost no good actors. Are well, they owned, individually owned, or are they primarily owned by one person or one company? or? They're one? individually owned, and it's about 80% Korean immigrant owned this, uh, uh, this industry. And actually what has happened because of that is there's actually a race-based caste system within the salon. So you'll have women doing the same job in the salon, getting paid different amounts of money with Hispanic workers at the bottom, followed by Chinese, and then beautiful young Koreans are considered the most desirable. Well, do owners think they're doing anything wrong here? The owners find themselves to be heroic. How they say, so? we're employing an unemployable caste cast of people. These are people who maybe don't have papers to work in this country, don't speak a lot of English, and they believe they're giving people a leg up. How is this legal and how is the Department of Labor not overseeing this or, or allowing this to happen? Well, it's not legal. It's completely illegal. These people are being robbed of their wages. And in my investigation, it took me nine months to get information from the Department of Labor about the investigations they do. And when I finally got this database, I found that they rarely, rarely investigate nail salons. No investigations, no legal actions. Hardly any legal actions and almost no investigations. Why can't any of the workers complain? Are they yeah. in, in the country illegally? Even if you're in the country illegally, you still have the right to be paid mm -hmm. uh, properly according to our laws, but they're terrified. Actually, I had a worker tell me she does have papers to work. She pretends she doesn't when she's looking for a job. That's the only way to get hired. She says bosses want the most vulnerable workers so they won't speak up. I'm sitting here very surprised. Mm -hmm. Look, two broken nails. I'm mm -hmm. planning to go to the nail salon tomorrow. What, what, do we, what should we do? What can we do? I had a really hard time trying to answer that question for people because, as I yeah. said, I didn't find good actors in this. Um, maybe look for a punch card machine at the front of a salon showing that workers' hours are clocked. That there's actually something. I have never seen a punch card machine in exactly. a nail salon. Exactly. Why do you think there's been such a reaction? As we pointed out, that this is the most emailed article on the New York Times, the most Facebooked. Um, why do you think there's been such an interest in what you wrote? I think it's because of two reasons. One, nails are a universalizable thing. We all want to be Rihanna. We can't, but we can have her nails. And so, <laughs> right? It's, do we all want to be Rihanna? I want to be Rihanna. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, but it, so nails have become a, a totally accessible treat. Mm -hmm. So everybody does it. And number right. two, think of the experience of getting your nails done. You're holding hands with this woman. You're yeah. looking her in the eye, and you don't see her. I think it's because people secretly think there definitely was something going on. And what you've done is sort of exposed through some investigating about that, that labor force and what's, what's happening. I, yeah. I've been in these women's homes, and they're 12 to a one bedroom. It's a terrifying experience. I did not think it was that bad. I didn't. I'm trying to think, what should we do? I'm still Sarah stumped, stumped by that. Sarah Maslin-Nier, thank you so very much.